Well, my name is Robert Moore, and I'm a pastor with the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and have been a pastor in the parish for many, many years in Houston. And after 23 years serving a congregation in Houston, uh, it became time for the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, and I began to look and see if maybe that would be a new calling for me and my wife, Kathy. Well, as it turned out, it, it was, and uh, the city of Leipzig offered us a position as Reformation ambassador for the city of Leipzig, which we accepted the invitation uh, with the view that we would live at St. Thomas Church in Leipzig and also be active as a pastor there. But before 2017 actually arrived, then my church asked if I wouldn't help with some matters with the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and represent the church, not only in Leipzig, but also in Wittenberg, to which we answered, of course, yes. And so for three years, we served as the Reformation ambassadors for, Witten, uh, for Leipzig, and we served in the office of the ELCA uh, for those three years. When that term was ended, then we were invited by our church to remain, and so we live can still in Leipzig at St. Thomas Church, and I commute then to our offices, which we share with the Lutheran World Federation here in the Judenstrasse in Wittenberg. Oh, that's a very difficult question because there are so many spots, but things do pop right into mind. Of course, first and foremost is Luther City, uh, Wittenberg. Uh, here is where the Reformation started, where the tradition of our faith uh, actually got its start with Martin Luther and with Philip Melanchthon, with the help of Prince F Frederick the Wise. So, uh, so this is a wonderful, wonderful place to be. But also, it makes good sense that we live in Leipzig because Leipzig is associated with Luther. Luther had to go to Leipzig to visit with printers. He went there to do banking on, but on a few occasions. He was also invited there for the great Leipzig Disputation in uh, 1519, and there he made quite a, an effort at bringing about reform, but it actually failed, but it didn't, it didn't stop his development and he changed, it changed the course of arguments that were being made. Also, uh, Luther went and was invited in 1539 to come to Leipzig, in which time on, on uh, Pentecost Sunday, which was here this year, just last Sunday, and he preached uh, the sermon for the introduction of the Reformation and the Protestant Church in Leipzig. Well, I don't have any particular secret spots that I like to go to, but I like to think of the fact that Wittenberg, which has 50,000 uh, inhabitants, uh, is a very lovely city itself, and that's kind of a secret spot, because once you leave the old, old uh, medieval city, which we're in right now, you go into a city that is really marked by the architecture of the 1890s and uh, around this time, the turn of the century, and it made Wittenberg a beautiful city with lovely houses, great villas, and places to see, and of course they have their own uh, eating culture as well in these areas. So it's really quite worthwhile to, to know Wittenberg beyond the old city. We've been coming to Germany for a long time, so we've been learning a lot about different things in the culture. And then we, we might learn that we didn't like the way the Germans did things, but then when we went back to the United States, we found out we didn't like the way our own culture was doing things because we learned 
some better ways. And also the friendships. Friendships take a little bit longer in Europe, not only in Germany. And one has to be dedicated to having a, a longer term relationship. Whereas in America, people bond and then they may discover that, oh, they're not so sure they want that relationship and they have to get out of it. But in Germany, if you ultimately end up in a relationship uh, of, of love and care and, and just good friendship, then it's usually a very good relationship to have and it's worth the wait. Well, actually, uh, things have begun to get much better. Uh, I think just like around the world, the measures that we must uh, take care of in order to prevent getting the coronavirus are still uh, at work for us. But here in Wittenberg, and this, this is here in the city church, the Church of St. Mary. Uh, also, I said, said before, I work at St. Thomas Church in Leipzig. Uh, the government has allowed us to have certain numbers of people uh, based on the amount of space that is available so that everyone can keep distance. So that's been allowing enough people to come to worship so that we can actually have live worship services. Uh, in some cases, we're still producing videos because uh, particularly the elderly, uh, it's, a, it's a burden for them to try to come to church and it's also perhaps a higher risk for them. So many of the congregations, like here at St. Mary's Church or at St. Thomas Church, are continuing to make some videos so that people can watch those. Well, yes, you'd have to say they are first and foremost because one's in Germany and one's in the United States and we are very, very different in our cultures and language and all. But then there's a lot that we do in fact share in common because the world is globalized and so we share a lot in not only in terms of the history of our theology among the Lutherans anyway, uh, and therefore we're all able to share our understanding of those important documents and witnesses to the faith of Luther and of Melanchthon and many other great Lutheran theologians. So in some ways our church in like in Houston where I serve uh, is very uh, very recognizable uh, in comparison with the churches that are here in Germany and the role of the churches uh, are sometimes similar but also very trickily different because we each have our own different histories. So I always have to watch a little bit and make sure that I'm not making assumptions about the German church when I'm actually an American living in Germany. And that can be tricky, but it's also a friendly atmosphere. And so I, I end up doing what I think okay. I want to thank you for giving me some time to show you a little bit about my Wittenberg and, and to talk about the many facets that are so interesting about traveling here to Wittenberg, uh, into Saxon Anhalt, and into Turing, and where these great, great, uh, really monuments to the Reformation and to other aspects of the history of the church are presented for us and help us to get a greater understanding of what the faith has done over these last two millennia. So we invite you to come. We're here and now because the coronavirus seems to be taking some shape and our knowledge of these things are allowing us to be much more careful and safe that uh, we hope that we will be able to see you coming our way soon and we will enjoy sharing all of these great sites. Thank you for letting me talk to you.